2000 year old bible says jesus was not the son of god we're diving into this heresy as well as the inaccuracy of the article and we will get to that here in just one second thank you for joining faith unaltered i'm your co-host tyler fowler with me joshua davidson and we will see you soon Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Christians of all ages, to another episode of Faith Unaltered. I am your co-host, Tyler Fowler. With me is my stunning, beautiful, handsome man, uh, friend, Joshua Davidson, my other co-host. He's adorable. I love him to death. And he's a big, old, cuddly teddy bear. Whenever you meet this guy in real life, if you meet this guy in real life, like, I just want to wrap my arms around him because he is <laughs> he is the love muffin of Excalibur. Love muffin. Yes. Yep. Yes. Love, you doing, muffin. love muffin. Doing all right tonight? Uh, I've, you know, I'm doing. <laughs> that's probably the first time I've ever been called that. I'll be honest with you, but that's okay. Hey, I, I'm. I'll, first I'll, time I'll for everything, brother. I, I, I'm pretty sure I earned it, probably. Um, yeah. No, today's a good day. I'm just good. off. Uh, it's, my schedule got shifted, so I'm off Mondays instead of Saturdays now, and I'm just having a chill afternoon. I was watching some silly shows with my daughter and hanging out fat and happy from thanksgiving and it's been a great weekend hey, man. man hey it man cool. thanksgiving's a... my... huh? good 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 i was gonna say i got to visit, visit my father-in-law for thanksgiving uh up in clear lake cool. and anybody from california knows that clear lake's a really uh secluded away from everywhere in the middle of a bunch of really tall hills kind of place so on the way back we left right after sundown and about an hour from my father-in-law's house is like this large, you know, uphill, downhill kind of mountain pass you pass through. And right. we got to stop and get out of the car, turn off the headlights. There's no light anywhere. And just look up at the stars, right? And for somebody who lives in the Bay Area of California, that is, so cool. that is not a, a, uh, a sight that we get to see very often. I can mm -hmm. say from my house, I get to see the coolest sunsets in the world. This California coast and my son, my house, the front windows face directly toward the west. And I get to see the sunset all year long dance across the horizon. But nice. I rarely get to see the Milky Way. Yeah. That was a privilege. Man, I would have so loved, incredible. I would have loved to have been there, bro. Like I have always wanted to see the stars like that. And we went on a cruise. So I took my wife for our honeymoon. We went to Costa Maya, Mexico and Cozumel. And I was hoping that they would do like this thing at night where they would, even if it's just one night, like that would be cool. Shut off all the lights on the boat, you know, on, on the, on the ship. 
and leave the you know the the emergency lights on or whatever but man just pitch black it out and let us have a good view of the stars right, right. it never happened and so i was really <laughs> bummed about that but other than that like curves are great but I've always wanted to see the stars like that. Like I'm so jealous whenever we get guys on like Dr. Hugh Ross, for example, that just gets to look at that stuff all the time and see space for really what it is. You know what I mean? And bro, you're, you are lucky and you're blessed and I'm jealous of <laughs> you right now. So it was a great all I can say, like, all I can say this weekend is I got a bird. Like that, that's about all that happened. I was sick over Thanksgiving. <laughs> I will go get my little heckle here in just a second. But the I was name sick. for a bird ever. I know. I know. Right. Like, and she came with that name already. So we didn't have to change nothing. She's already comfortable about it. Oh, that's um, hilarious. And, and heckle was, uh, is our new, uh, part of our family. And so I'll go grab her here in just a second. But, but yeah, I was sick <laughs> over the holidays, dude. Like I was, it started on Monday. Like, well, actually it started last Friday. And I was just feeling like dog dookie the entire week. I went to work. I missed work on Monday. I went to work Tuesday, Wednesday, and just dragging, bro. Thursday rolls around. Or, yeah, Thursday rolls around. Sick. Friday rolls around. So no Thanksgiving for Tyler. Like, I did go to my family's. Like, you know, I was cautious and everything like that. But I ended up staying. My So my wife went to her in-laws, took Kelsey. And we stayed, or I stayed home because i was just sick like I, I i did not want to do anything with anybody and then saturday rolls around or friday rolls around okay getting better saturday sunday i start feeling better and now we're here on monday but keep the audience entertained for just a second i'm gonna grab my bird and then we will get started on this stupid 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 article that i found today uh. and we're gonna go through it this is gonna be a little mini episode so so nothing huge we're not going two hours tonight or anything like that but this is just the most untruthful inaccurate unhistorical article that I, why they let this happen i have no idea other than it's an attack on christianity like it, it has to be and it and it's just garbage to that but let me go get my bird i will be right back it, and and to his point just now i'm actually not convinced entirely that this isn't just a troll that somebody's writing this article just to see uh what they can get away with pushing in the in the misinformation direction uh and see how many people will cite it as an argument against christianity because i've seen people do some silly things writing articles but i think he's right i can't imagine putting my name on something like this uh and i'm so surprised that it wasn't posted by an anonymous poster uh, it, <laughs> you gotta yeah, that's a good one. You, dude, you make me realize that I need a haircut. I really need a haircut. Um, but Do yeah, I, mean, I, I was saying you make me realize that I really need a haircut again because uh, my hair is not looking very Got good. That boy shaved here. on Wednesday. Come here, sweetie. I'm hiding under a hat. That bird. Oh, oh. where are you at? Come here. <laughs> Lost the bird. Come here. There, we'll just put her on my finger. There you go. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, it's a tiny one, huh? That's Heckle. Yeah. She's a peached faced lovebird. And she's uh she's not you want to jump up there? There you go. You can hang out right there. She's like, I'm camera shut, guys. You need to I'm, go. Away. I'm a peach faced love muffin, apparently. That's you you are forever known, like Ringo says, you're forever known as Love Muffin. And so <laughs> you just might as well change Joshua Davidson CSG to Love Muffin whatever. How how, how, how much do you think it would cost to change FTW. my license? You know, you I'll tell you this. You can get your name changed <laughs> to whatever you want to. I mean, it's the 21st century. It's 2022, right? Is Love and Muffin can, a you, gender? I'm kidding. Look, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It, be be non gender. It, it it's what I'll it is. I'll be who I want. I'm from be, California. You are who you are, right? <laughs> and you exist, therefore. Or wait, you think, therefore, you are, right? Right. Yeah. There. I I are. Yeah. I pay You're attention. Right. I pay attention. All right, guys. <laughs> let's get into this. I'm just gonna let Heckle hang out and do her thing, and so she might see her like going across the 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 um, arm of my mic stand i don't know what you call that the boom i guess the, the that would be arm. the fancy yep. name for it so let's go ahead and share this article and what we're going to do is go through it's not a very long article whatsoever so we're going to read it all and then we're going to go through the points that i just found absolutely baffling 
why again this article was ever released to be published is beyond me i think that these people really need to and it's news break um so a lot of bs comes from them but there's a lot of good stuff that comes from them too and this article it was on the bottom of the tell and bro like it, it, it's just horrible and you guys will see what i'm talking about here in just a second so let's go ahead and share my screen and y'all can follow along as i read this as well but we'll read the whole thing and then we'll go point by point <clears throat> all right Christianity has done a good job of concealing the ancient 2000. Oh, by the way, let's look at this picture real quick. Can I zoom in? Ah, yes. So check this out. This is the 2000 year old Bible that has been hidden by Christians to hide the truth. Photo by history of yesterday. You ever notice that? Look at that. It's in English. I didn't know they had the English language <laughs> 2000 years ago. That should have been the key thing right there. And I didn't notice this until just a little bit ago. But that should have been the key thing right there for me to be like, I'm going to do a video on this. But you know what? I didn't notice it until a little bit ago. But, yep, there it is. Uh, and it's not even like Elizabethan, uh, you know, like it, it, it's just regular. It looks like a family Bible that got left in the shed. And, and filtered on top of filtered. Like this would make. <laughs> I. <laughs> Never mind. I'm not going to say that. But this, <laughs> I was going to say this would make only fan girls look good. But anyway, but, but, but this filter is just, or, or the stacks of filters that on this, I don't, I don't even know. But there you go. That's what we're getting into tonight, ladies and gentlemen. And, and we'll just dive into the article. So you know it's going to be good. It's by Andre. You go, get up there. And yeah, there you go. All right. It's by the article is by Andre. And I'm going to butcher this last name, Tapalaga. Uh, that looks Tablaca. right. Uh, t yep. And so, uh, that's his picture right here. And he's a handsome guy. I don't know why he's silly and, and, and just writes stupid articles, but you know, whatever it is, what it is. You can't judge a book by its cover, right? You can't. Do what that. I was saying is I th I'm not convinced it's not a troll to see how, how many people will actually cite this as an argument against Christianity. I mean, this dude's got, uh, 1,215,554 followers. So, or wait, I'm sorry, wow. 121,554, my bad, uh, on on Newsbreak. And this article right here <laughs> has already gotten like 4,000 comments. And so people are blowing this up. All right, let's read it, and then we'll get into the uh, the actual truth that, that lies behind this. So Christianity has done a good job of concealing the ancient 2,000-year-old Bible that the majority of people are unaware of. This is so because the Bible contains numerous Gospels that were omitted from the New Testament and which provide a more accurate account of Jesus Christ's life. The fact that so many things go counter to Christian teachings has been kept a secret until now. The Gospel of Barnabas, which is extremely conscientious, is one of or contentious, excuse me, which is extremely contentious, is one of the intriguing facts about this Bible. One of Jesus' apostles, an early Christian follower, is named Barnabas in this book. The churches of Alexandria acknowledge the Gospel of Barnabas as canonical up to 325 CE. Irenaeus, I'm assuming he means Irenaeus, uh, railed against Paul. Hmm. That's interesting, since the two lived, you know, 200 years apart. Uh, but but he railed against Paul for incorporating concepts from the ancient Roman religion and Platonic philosophy into Christianity. That devil, how regularly used the or he regularly used the Gospel of Barnabas to support his claims. This suggests that during the first now listen to this guys first and second centuries of christianity the barnabas gospel was frequently read we're going to get into that and and we will let you be the judge of what is true and what is not true but let's continue shall we it was decided to burn all original hebrew language gospel manuscripts at the nicene council in 325 ce something they don't teach you in the church history class an edict was given that anyone found in possession of these gospels would be put to death 
what is believed to be one of the very last copies of the gospel, was discovered in the 16th century in the personal library of Pope Sixtus. The most intriguing claim stated in Barnabas's gospel is that Jesus wasn't even crucified since he was not the son of God. This Bible portrays Jesus as a prophet whose purpose and destiny is to attain paradise by practicing charity and imparting Christian principles to other followers. One of Jesus Christ's 12, 12 apostles, Judas Iscariot, is the one who was ultimately crucified in this tale. Another intriguing feature of the story is that Jesus and the prophet Muhammad eventually united after meeting, demonstrating that it is possible to live in a world without crusades or murders committed in the name of one religion or another. It has been kept a secret for many years because, as you might imagine, the Christian church could not accept such beliefs or teachings to reach the Christian population and so with that heretic her where is david russell when we need him <laughs> dude tonight? seriously hey there's i see chase in the comments so i just want to give a shout out to all our listeners so far ringo what is up brother junior vince and chase our good brother and friend chase orosco is in the comment section so what is up guys if you got a question leave it in the comments we will get to it here in just a second but boot Boot, hey, Vince boot, is on a roll, bro. This boot, is funny. <laughs> this guy's doing LSD. I don't know if he's talking about me or the author, but I promise I'm not doing LSD. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Oh, so that was a good one. Josh, let me get your initial thoughts, and then we'll break this thing down um, my, and, and expose my, okay, my, the lies that, that it is. My, my first thought, which was, I, I think, I, I don't know if it stood out to me the most, but is probably the most ironically mm -hmm. funny is right after saying Jesus wasn't crucified because Jesus wasn't God and then saying, oh, this has Islamic roots. And by the way, Jesus met Muhammad and was like buddy, buddy with him after that. 600 years after ask, the fact. Right. Like, is Jesus already 500 plus years old <laughs> by the time <laughs> Muhammad is born? And they're just fine with that. And no, Jesus isn't God. He's just immortal somehow. Like, right. Because that's one of the attributes of God, you know, case. that's right. right. My question is, when do they meet? So my initial thoughts on this, I thought they were talking about the epistle of Barnabas. But once I keep once I kept reading or wow, let, let, I screw that all. Let's try this again. I originally thought they were talking about the epistle of Barnabas. But once I kept reading, then I realized that, no, they're actually talking about this document, which I had never heard of before until now. So I guess the Christians did a really good job of keeping a secret from me that the gospel of Barnabas even existed. But I, I thought they were talking about the epistle of Barnabas, which does not talk. You can go read the epistle of Barnabas for free on the Internet everywhere, right? It does not talk about the crucifixion of Christ. Not that I'm aware of. I can I, I can be corrected on that. But to my knowledge, the epistle of Barnabas does not talk about the crucifixion of Christ. And if it does, it tells us that Christ was crucified, right? And so I got to thinking, is this like an Islamic, you know, like a forgery, a, a pseudepigrapha that was written by a Muslim? Because mm -hmm. it sounds kind of like it. You know, we talk about in Surah 4, uh, or Surah 4, excuse me, that the um they, and don't get me wrong guys there's a big controversy and there's a big debate about what sura 4 is actually talking about but basically the the nuts and bolts of it is that jesus appears to be crucified right and there's a big debate about you know whether appear there yada yada, yada. It, you can look it up if you want to james white does a really good uh talk discussion about that uh whether whatever you believe about james white but he does really good talk about that uh sura four but here's the thing that lined up with what i thought you know islam teaches right and so it sounded very very sketchy to me from the get-go about you know jesus not being crucified and then jesus meeting up with muhammad i'm like this is islam dude this is like this is something that they would propose or, or you know modern uh, 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 apologists, modern uh, Islamic apologists, what they talk about. And so yeah. it blew my mind that this is, you know, the gospel of Barnabas is even talking about something like this. But uh, regardless, I digress. So let's jump into the article. Like I said, this isn't going to be long. 
Uh, but I just want to go through and kind of pick this horrendous article apart and, and <laughs> cast it to the dogs <laughs> and let them spit out the bones whenever they get done with it. And so let's do this. Christianity has done a good job of concealing the ancient 2000 year old Bible at the, that the majority of people are unaware of. What's interesting to me is that first of all, whenever you read this article, there's no sources. There's not one source quoted in the entire thing. There's assertions that are made. And this is really the only time that I read that you even hear about this 2000 year old Bible. The article goes on to talk about the epistle, or I'm sorry, the Gospel of Barnabas in somewhat of detail, but this is the only time it mentions this 2000 year old Bible. So the Bible, I don't know. Maybe if you click this link right here, it will take you and tell you more about it. But this is the only time it's ever mentioned. And so, yeah, it sounds like clickbait. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But you and know, so, this guy's yeah. an avid writer with invaluable knowledge that's looking to educate users with with correct uh, information, and and, yeah. and he's obviously got completely pure motives, and he's not trying to trick you, totally. right? He's not trying to like Unbiased. gaslight he's, you into thinking he's neutral. That some secret esoteric knowledge that he's got going under that really fancy looking hat. I know that is a fancy hat. I like it. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> this okay. This is so. Because the Bible contains numerous Gospels that were omitted from the New Testament, which provide a more accurate account of Christ's life. My first initial response to this was, based on what standard? What What are you talking about? How do you know that? So what he's talking about is the Gnostic Gospels that were apparently, and the way the story goes, the way it gets tossed around in Christian circles, on Facebook, on social media sites, is that at the Council of Nicaea, and we're going to talk about the Council of Nicaea here in just a minute, but at the Council of Nicaea, they came together to dispute and argue about the canon of Scripture. What books were going to be added in, or what books were going to be left alone, and what books were going to be omitted. And this is, you can ask any Christian scholar, we had not only Jeremiah Short, on David had him on uh, proselytize or apostatize in its you know kind of fina finality uh one of the final episodes that they did under that name he had uh Jeremiah Short the black doctor on to discuss what happened at uh, the council of Nicaea we actually had Dr. Philip Carey Josh I don't know if you were on for that episode or not I will link these in the description but David and I actually <laughs> talked to Dr. Philip Carey who is a, a prestige scholar. He's taught the Great, Great Courses series that you can download on Audible. He's been, uh, he's wrote many books. He's writing a book now on the Council of Nicaea. And so I will, I want to get that book as soon as he releases it and then bring him back on to interview him about it. But y'all, this is a myth. The canon of scripture was not discussed at the Council of Nicaea. There were a few things that were discussed at the Nicene Council in 325, but the canon of Scripture was not one of them. Arianism was the big topic at hand at the Council. That's what brought everybody together in the first place to discuss what are we going to do with these teachings that this guy named Arius is purporting. He talks about the son of uh, the, the son of God, Jesus, being a created being. This goes against what we all understand, you know, that Jesus is not a created being. He is God. He is of the same nature as God, homoousios, and uh, of God the Father. And that was the big topic at hand at the Council of Nicaea. Now, secondary issues were discussed, things like Easter. Christmas were discussed there. So different dates like that, do we, you know, do they uh, come together and say, hey, do we need to talk about a new date? Do we basically, uh, do we accept the date that we've all kind of been, you know, re rejoicing and celebrating, right? Is that what we do or do we need to change this? Those were the two big issues. And I would definitely put Arianism as primary, right? But those were the two main issues that were discussed at the Council of Nicaea. And so if you, if you ever hear anybody set talking about the canon of Scripture was discussed there, guys and, and gals, they don't know what they're talking about. This was not a topic at hand at the Council of Nicaea, period, end of subject. Josh, is there anything that you'd like to add to that? 
No, that, was, that was pretty that was pretty great bro i mean the only other thing that i would add is is uh the reference to the idea of a two thousand year old bible uh in that calling it a bible is kind of an ironic statement in the first place um yeah i i just you don't i it, it 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 just becomes more and more apparent as you stare at it you see yeah. more that's wrong with it yeah um you know yeah. it's just one of those things it's like one of those pictures where it's like it gets worse the longer you stare at it <laughs> <laughs> right. I was watching a, uh, a, a, it was a scary video on Slapped Ham the other night. And that was kind shout of. Shout out Slapped Ham. It's like a shout out Slapped Ham. But we, uh, they said it, it gets more discerning, right? The longer that you look at this picture. And, and you're right. The more that is wrong with this article really comes out, the more you look at it. Now, about, about a 2000 year old Bible, I've always been under the assumption, and I think I'm right whenever I say this, but I think there were Bibles in some sense anyway, back in, because you had the Septuagint, right? You had mm -hmm. those books collected and put together. Now, do did they look like Bibles like we carry around? You know, like, no, I don't think so. But it would have been more like a scroll library. I think so. I think so. And we see that in Matthew and Mark whenever they, you know, <laughs> there's atheists like to talk about how the Bible contradicts itself whenever an author of the New Testament will quote uh, a, a passage from Joel and say that it's from Isaiah, right? And that's that's really um, not a contradiction whatsoever because, again, back then, they had a main, basically your major prophets, what we would call the major prophets today. That was the title of the scroll. Now, it was not by any stretch of the imagination a surprise if you found the minor prophets, some of the minor prophets even, or all of the minor prophets, written in that same scroll that's titled Isaiah. There wasn't the chapter divisions that we have today. There wasn't any of that, you know, that was going on. But what they did do is they titled a scroll Isaiah. They would put the whole book of Isaiah on that scroll or, you know, or on many scrolls. And then they would add the minor prophets to that. They didn't have a printing press back then, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. And no, no surprise there. But that's how the Jews kept their stuff organized and, and kept their scriptures. That totally looked like it came off a printing press in that picture, bro. Totally. It looked, like it looked, it looked like it was printed perfectly. I mean, I would like to meet the guy that drew that, like that hand copied it, you know, by candlelight. And, right. Anyway, I, no, I bet you it was Irenaeus. <laughs> it's Irenaeus. <laughs> All right. Oh, the fact man. that so many things go uh, counter Christian teaching has been kept sacred until now. So here's the thing that I wanted to bring to the table as well. So the Gospel of Barnabas was actually uh, hit international headlines back in 2012. And as we can see that this article uh, was posted a day ago. OK, so nothing is new about the Gospel of Barnabas. The Christians have been talking about the Gospel of Barnabas again since 20. 12. Um, and, and since that time, there has been more research. There has been, I'm going to show uh, everyone uh, an article that I have not bought, I have not purchased, um, but you can if you want to. Uh, and, and I'll read the abstract about the gospel of Barnabas and, and just some of the things that has been, has been brought to light since they've been doing research uh, on this. And so uh, let's go on. Uh, the gospel of Barnabas which is extremely contentious. That's true. Uh, that That's like the only thing they got right in this article, that it's extremely contentious. Wonder why? Because it contradicts so many of the old, uh, of the, uh, the New Testament writings. Like the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, it contradicts exactly what they say, namely by stating that Jesus was not crucified, nor is Jesus the Messiah, right? And so that's um, that's where they get it right. Um, but the problem is, is it just goes on to make these assertions that is just mind baffling. I, I, I don't understand it, um, but is uh, contentious and is one of the intriguing facts about this Bible. One of Jesus's apostles and an early Christian follower is named Barnabas in this book. So here's another thing. And, and Josh, I'll let you jump in on this as well. But there were these texts. And I've got a whole, I've got two whole books of them, uh, just right over there on my bookshelf. They're called pseudepigrapha, and just because a person claims to be 
in this instance, Barnabas. That does not mean that Barnabas or even a follower of Jesus or an eyewitness of Jesus at this time, I should say, that doesn't mean that they were the person that they claimed to be. This was a style of writing back in those times, in, in biblical times, that people would do, that they would to to whether give um, more fame, I guess, if you want to call it, to the apostle. Like there's a lot of people that wrote under the apostle Paul, right? There was a lot of people that wrote under, you know, different uh, Mary, right? The the gospel of Mary. Just think of the Gnostic gospels, right? The gospel of uh, Judas, right? A lot of people did this. And I don't think that, you know, it's my, my little girl's going crazy, but I don't think there was any kind of, you know, uh, like secrecy or, or any kind of deception that was happening here. I think it was a style of writing. It was a, um, what, how, how do I want to say this? It was a form that people did, I think personally, uh, for entertainment purposes, not only for entertainment purposes, but they did this as well to represent historical facts like, uh, Oh, oh, why can't I think of this? Why is this name escaping me? Um, Anyway, I'll come back to it. But but that's what people did. That's what, uh, you know, back in the day. So, I, I mean, I don't know anything else other to add than, than, you know, of what I just said. But, Josh, what are your thoughts on Pseudepigrapha? And uh, do you think it was for, like, deception? Or do you think that there was an actual purpose in claiming to be somebody else, writing under their name, uh, than, and, and not being that person? Um, I, I think that probably it was for, well, without trying to psychologize people that I have no connection with, I, well, I would of course. say there's, there's probably an intuitive desire to be credible. Um, and so you would, you know, claim the name of somebody who already has credibility or authority and you're speaking on behalf of that authority. Um, there's also, let's say, um, the desire to hide oneself. Uh, if you knew that there was a charge of heresy coming against you for writing adverse ideas and things like that. Um, and then there is, like you said, perhaps the idea of this is just something that we're doing, like the way that uh, Enoch uh, got developed later over Enoch. time as well. No, I um, don't know why I couldn't think of that. Go ahead. You know, that those, those, those kind of things did happen over time. They would develop. And it's not all that weird to think that they would develop that way. Um, you know, a lot of people try to charge the entire New Testament with something that develops in a legendary way. I think that's one of the reasons why textual critics are so important. And yeah. the people that are doing this historical study is so important for the quality of our, our understanding of, of the historical narrative in Scripture versus the legendary developments around the ideas of Scripture. Because it's not like we don't have you know, even like the mystics writing about some of their visions and, and things that we're talking like, uh, with the, with the whole, you know, like we were talking about St. Ephraim and the vision of, of Eden as a cosmic, uh, structure on uh, CSG. And right. it's like that, that also is not a canonical scriptural text that he's writing. Right. But he wasn't making that claim. And so that's where it becomes the controversy. I think is that when somebody tries to claim to be one of the authoritative authors of scripture, they're probably doing that in order to claim that authority. Um, you know, it does give them or, authority in that sense, right? Like, well, Paul wrote this, right? So, right, right, exactly. And it's not like they had historical data to go off of back then, where if you said, Hey, look, I found this thing, there aren't a bunch of textual detectives that are going around debunking new texts or whatever. Right. Right. And it's like, if, if there was, you know, like there's a lot of advantages that somebody back then would have had to be that kind of theological snake oil salesman, you know, like that's, I, I think there's a lot of uh, advantages we have today in what we're doing now is like you pull up this article and we could pull up 10 other articles that yeah. are like, yeah, dude, you probably haven't read past the first 10 words that you cited that sounded theological and you're just kind of stringing. That's why I was saying, I'm not convinced entirely that this isn't just somebody trolling to try to see who is going to cite these kind of articles in an Could argument well be. because you know, it's not like this is far off that like some YouTuber that's a big name YouTuber on, uh, 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 for atheism right now could just find this article and scroll through it and be like, checkmate. You know what I mean? Done. Yep. I, I would just, it's, it's funny. I've seen people do it 
uh, to, to the mainstream media is just troll them so hard and like make up fake articles and see how far it'll travel before it finally right. gets found out. And somebody does actual fact checking. It's like, it's we're we have some serious advantages today to be able to, you know, look at something like this and be like, yeah, no, you know, and I think that, uh, I think Elijah actually said something that was really interesting. One thing I've learned in this walk with Christ is that people will believe everything and everybody except Jesus. Right. <laughs> and I think that there's a lot of truth to that. You know, if you just, if you run across one of these articles, one of the things that I, because here's the thing, we claim to be followers of the truth, the guy that claimed to be the truth. Right. And the way I think that we can really live up to that, to that expectation is to be truth seekers and sometimes truth is literally a five second click away we got the technology to look up these kinds of assertions and to fact check them ourselves not rely on the people that claim to be fact checkers right let's be good seekers and followers of the truth and actually dive into this this kind of stuff ourselves. This is why I'm doing this. This is a whole reason why I'm doing this to keep maybe some new Christian that stumbles across this article get his faith shipwrecked because of it. And what am I going to do now? No, listen, there this is bogus. It's BS. <laughs> and and, and we're trying, you know, we're trying to explain why that is, right? And so let's continue, Josh. We're uh, 36 minutes in already, and I know my babysitter is getting ready to leave. And so let's go ahead and let's hit a couple more points, and then we'll close. Um, so the churches of Alexandria acknowledge the God. Okay, so here's what I want to dive into. This is, uh, I think, a, a main point that would there would be a lot more credibility to this if if Andrea or Andre would have actually cited some sources. And, and he doesn't. And so the very first thing, if anyone out there that's reading an article, if there's no sources cited, that should be suspect immediately. Period. End of subject. All right. The churches of Alexandria acknowledge the gospel of Barnabas as canonical up to 325 CE. Irenaeus railed against Paul for incorporating concepts from the ancient Roman religion and Platonic philosophy into Christianity. He regularly used the gospel of Barnabas to support his claims. This suggests that during the first and second centuries of Christianity, the Barnabas gospel was frequently read. I want now to completely demolish, absolutely demolish this because, as I've said, there has been more come to light over the past, and this was written, published in March of 2010, Right. And so it seems like that the Gospel of Barnabas has been uh, known about for quite some time now. And so this is the abstract. I'm not going to get into the article. Like I said, I don't have access to it. Uh, but the abstract is this. And I thought there was a, a, a very good point made in this. So the so called Gospel of Barnabas is a curious writing whose historical background remains obscure. The writing is attested in two manuscripts an Italian one from the 16th century, and a Spanish one from the 18th century. Despite recent claims to the contrary, the Italian text can be shown to be the original from which the Spanish was translated. The date of the Italian text is probably rather earlier than that of the manuscript. Strong arguments point to an origin in the 14th century. This isn't 14th century BC, ladies and gentlemen. This is AD 14, uh, how, how 1500 years after the fact, 1500 years after the fact, after Jesus walked this earth, this is when this gospel comes to light. Although it incorporates large amounts of extra, eh, extraneous material, the gospel of Barnabas does follow the basic narrative thread of the canonical gospels, telling the story of Jesus of Nazareth from his birth to the crucifixion. One of the sources used by the author appears to have been an Italian diatessaron, closely related to the Venetian and Tuscan harmonies edited by Tedesco Vacari and Vitasso in 1938, as is shown by a number of unique shared readings. And so there's two manuscripts, one's from the 14th century, or I'm sorry, one's from the 16th century, one is from the 18th century, and the earliest that scholars agree that the original came is the 14th century. So 
if scholars are saying that this is the 14th century, my question to Andre Tapalaga is how in the world did Irenaeus uh, know anything about this gospel? How did the churches of Alexandria know anything about this gospel? And how in the world did Irenaeus use this gospel in railing against Paul that, uh, I'm sorry, who lived 200 years after the fact? Paul and Irenaeus was not contemporary to contemporaries, ladies and gentlemen. Irenaeus came 130 years after Paul. And so he's not railing against anybody. Actually, Irenaeus agreed with Paul, you know, since he was an inspired apostle that followed. Oh, well, I take that back. There's debate about that. But Paul became an apostle after Jesus rose. And so, no, he was not one of the 12. But Paul met Jesus face to face. There's there's claims that Paul uh, was taught by Jesus for three years in, in Arabia. That's not biblical it's speculation, I believe. Uh, there's arguments for one side or the other. It, it, no matter how you look at it, Paul met Jesus face to face on the road to Damascus, right? And so the point I'm trying to make is that Irenaeus comes 130 years or even 150 years after Paul died. And so it's, I, I, I don't, I don't know where these claims come from. There's clearly no sources cited because there's no sources that can be found in regards to these claims. This whole paragraph right here needs to be taken out and done away with because there's no truth. It's unhistorical and there's just absolutely no truth to this whatsoever period in the subject um uh, let me jump down to the, this last pair or this next to last paragraph and uh, josh i'll get your thoughts on it as well also it was decided to burn all original hebrew language gospel manuscripts at the nicene council in 325 ce and you're edict was page do what oh you're, on the wrong, you're, sorry. you're showing the wrong page. there you go how's that my bad all right, it was decided to burn all original Hebrew language gospel manuscripts at the Nicene Council in 325 CE. An edict was given that anyone found in possession of these gospels would be put to death. What is believed to be one of the very last copies of the gospel was discovered in the 16th century in the personal library of Pope Sixtus. Now, I don't know where this, uh, this manuscript was discovered or anything like that. What I want to hit on is what was said in the first couple sentences. No, again... There is absolutely no evidence to support the fact that the Council of Nicaea decided to burn any Hebrew language gospel. There's a there's a there's a debate about whether Matthew was written originally in Hebrew or not, but that's beside the point. No council in Nicaea in 325 ever even talked about the canon of scripture. <laughs> Let me plug that back in. And so I don't, I, I don't understand. I don't, I don't know. Again, no sources are cited. And, and this is just baloney. I'm sorry, but here, I want to show a picture real quick. And uh, there you go. Screenshot that. Bird. Whenever. Yes. Yeah. She's trying to get. Come here, baby. Oh, she's going to fly away. Ah, she landed on the bed. Okay. Um, <laughs> the Council of Nicaea had absolutely nothing to do with the choosing, uh, with choosing of the books of the New Testament. What the Council did address, Arianism, the date of Easter. What the Council did not address, the books of the Bible, inventing the deity of Christ, creation of the Trinity, suppression of women, reincarnation. There's just <laughs> absolutely no evidence again, to this, like I said earlier, the primary issue that was discussed at Council of Nicaea was Arianism. There was a secondary date of Easter that was talked about. Other than that, there might have been a few different things uh, that was that's different uh, with those, but those were your two main uh, subjects that were discussed at the Council of Nicaea. And so, Josh, um, so I'll, the, uh, these, I'll turn it these, over. Go these kind of articles, the, 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 like the one that you brought up here um, yeah. from Andre, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I, I, I think these are the same kind of articles that I've seen over and over being cited and uh, used as, let's say, shorthand clickbait 
proof against Christianity from even like the 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 new age kind of uh, people that are that are really big on conspiracy theories and this hidden knowledge, hidden history, everything we've been lied to. Authority is just bad. Like you shouldn't believe anybody except the the people that you hear on YouTube who say things that are controversial. You should believe those people, but everybody else you should just not believe because they're trying to hide something from you. Um, these these are the kind of articles that I've seen posted almost just on repeat from the same kind of people uh, in in discussions online right. or even sometimes cited in in YouTube videos where people are coming on and talking about you know they're they're hiding from you the 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 Christ consciousness and you know like these these oddball like contra really what it is is people seeking to to bring controversy. Uh, and they're there, which is technically, I think the formal definition of heresy is looking to divide through controversy, right? Like what right. they're doing is, is trying to bring question to, uh, you know, Christian tradition and the way that they're doing it is I think cheap and unthinking. Um, and, and I, not, not to say that everybody who's ever, you know, shared an article that they didn't fact check for an hour is, is cheap and unthinking. I'm talking right. about people who have, let's say made a YouTube career or, uh, gotten amassed huge following by just saying controversial things that they know are going to get the doctrinal, doctrinal police going. Uh, they're going to rile up the heresy hunters and then they're going to get a bunch of Christians to come out and be like, Oh, you, you're saying these things. Oh, you're so dangerous. Once that happens, they can look to their fan base and see, 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 yeah. they're trying to silence me. Look at the credibility I get because I called it. I'm prophet yeah. so-and-so. I said they would try to silence me. I'm being like Christ. Those like that kind of stuff just bothers the heck out of me. And I've seen these kind of articles be some of the bread and butter of those citations and these like repeated right. nonsense claims about uh, historical Christianity. And so. Uh, yeah, I think I think it's good to to poke and prod the bear a little bit, maybe, and question some of church history. But fabrication is just lame, and it's stupid. You know, <laughs> it's stupid, exactly. Uh, but no, I agree. I agree, man. And you know, there, I I think you're right, Josh. There's it comes a point where I think people maybe they even post these things, like you just said, to whenever they get the reaction for the very fact of saying, well, look at what, how they're treating me. Look at what they're doing to me. The Christians that are supposed to be loving and kind and, and basically just get walked on like a, like a carpet or a mat, you know, they're actually mm -hmm. coming back and, and, and actually standing up for themselves, God forbid. Right. right. And you know what? That's, I, I, I think, don't get me wrong. I think Christianity, I love Christianity. I think it's a very, passive you know turn the other cheek or, or stuff like that but at the same time you don't get walked on like a mat okay you don't just get to have somebody claim assertions that have no basis in history whatsoever and say and, and not be able to say anything about it you know what i mean and so i think you're right i think it is good for christians not only does it bolster our faith in the end right whenever we can look at these it's articles fun. And it, it is, it is, it bolsters <laughs> our faith. It's fun. And it, and it does, I think the heart good, you know, it always helps me to, to sleep at night, you know, reading this article and actually being able to say, look, I have reasons to reject this stupid kind of stuff, right? This stupid, uh, article that, that, that again, like I said, has no basis in history. Uh, it also no shows the power. Whatsoever. Which, it, it really shows the power of narrative and building information around a narrative rather than building information around citation around yeah. credibility because right. their their fundamental claim is the authorities are corrupt they're lying to you they're right. hiding things and so if you say what are your sources the 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 next response is see you're just living in your echo chamber and you don't want to listen. You don't right. want to question the authorities. You're just a you know, mindless peon that just believes whatever you're told. Whatever you're told. Right. Whenever you know, it's the opposite. <laughs> I mean, it's important to know the narrative is that powerful, though, because really 
that's what's happening is people are hearing things like this and being told you've been lied to. There are hidden things. They find a couple of articles that say something like this. And then they go, well, what isn't my pastor telling me? They ask the pastor and pastor's like gospel of Barnabas. What are you talking about? And this person's like, well, you don't know either. Oh no, that I must've been lied to. And it's just this, it really is just a narrative. Effect. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a narrative. That's all it is. It's a, it's a narrative that can map onto your emotive like let's say there's a suspicion and a reasonable suspicion that maybe you don't know everything. Fine. That's good. You should live in that place, but you should not live in a story that feeds you your own propaganda. Right. Like that is not, it's toxic for you because then it makes everything that's unfalsifiable more believable than things that could be proven true. Right. Right. I want to answer this one question real quick, and then I have got to go. Uh, you guys seem bored. Are you actually intellectually stimulated by responding to these meaningless claims, or are there not enough to refute these? I'm not sure about that last sentence anyway, but I am actually. I am actually intellectually stimulated uh, by responding to these meaningless claims, and the reason <laughs> I say that is because to go into and actually do the research to show that they are indeed meaningless, it helps me sleep at night. It bolsters my faith. And if this video, you know, if we went on for 50 minutes now, if this video can reach someone that this article maybe, just maybe has troubled, then I think we've done our job. You know what I mean? Because mm. we, we've we helped someone that, you know, there's been a lot of people talking about, you know, leaving the faith. There's been people that have left the faith. And I just don't want this article and, and all the other ones out there that are like it to be one of the reasons that someone does that. And so intellectually stimulating, yes, but more so primarily, I'm doing this as a Christian that wants to help other Christians. Simple as that. You know what I mean? Josh, any final words? There's David. Uh I, so, I, David. Oh yeah, what's up, David? So I, I'm I'm lagging out pretty hard right now. I don't know if you can hear me, but yeah, my my internet's cutting in and out again. It, it has it hasn't been doing this most of the episode, but all of a sudden it started doing that. So I missed some of what you just said. But um, as far as the the question specifically, you guys seem bored. Are you actually stimulated? I'm having fun. I think this is funny. Like yeah. I like there's there's a lot of stuff that we've talked about that is a lot more serious than this. Uh, it's not always fun to be serious. It's it can be useful, and it's not Perfect. like we you know it's not like we want to talk about things that are useless and and not you know be intellectual or whatever. But it, it, sometimes it's nice to just look at something and say, hey, well that's silly. Well, why is it silly? Well, let's talk about why it's silly, and then just you know poke the poke the bear like like we were just talking about. Um, I think there's there's there is fun in that. And I, I hi Kelsey, hi. Wow, she's getting huge, bro. Say hi. <laughs> hi. Hi. Mm. Yeah. Oh my goodness, you are so big now. What is that? Lala. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's a dryer sheet. It looks oh, like. Oh man, that's yeah. that's the best. All right. Dude, her hair is getting so long. Dude, her hair's down almost to her butt now. Wow. You want to show them your stuffy? <laughs> but yeah so the uh the oh i see here he said that was actually very touching i think he liked your answer i think so uh, yeah to that. Uh, michael star i see is in the comments too got the truth is the truth and always will be the truth and the Amen. source of all truth is god the enemy is using people to spread the world's version of truth and truth the truth will set you free amen bro amen yes. oh Can yeah you say amen Love Say, some uh, Say amen. 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 All right, y'all. This has been fun, Josh. I love you. Thank you for coming on with me, brother. No, no more stuffies. We're getting very close. And uh, I just, I, I appreciate everybody just tuning in, giving us the my love, turn, giving us the likes. Hi, baby. What's up, Terry? <laughs> hi. Hi. You want to see Kelsey? Oh, we gotta be nice to kitten. Say hi, Kelsey. Hi, Kelsey. Can you say hi? Hi. Wow, hi. how cool, huh? Yeah. She looks like me. <laughs> she looks like you. Yeah. Kind of, huh? You guys gotta You're get together and play. 
Yeah, you see the duck right there. <laughs> There's the duck. All right. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we are out of here. Whoa. Hold also, on, I hurt my leg. You hurt your leg? Ah, she's in my headphones. She did. She fell at Papa's house and uh, gave herself a pretty good scrape on the knee right there. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was. Oh, no. That was Owie, but she's doing okay now. Right on. That's good. All right, y'all. Until next time, we will, Josh and I will see you. Hopefully, David will be on here with us the next time as well. And we will see you then. But as always, and until then, good night. God bless and stay like Christ.